Good Sabbath to you all. And what a beautiful day it is. High Sabbath. Oops, we're going right. I hope everybody enjoyed their Lord's Supper last night. I know that uh, our congregation met and we had a wonderful time. And it uh, seems to have a deeper meaning every year that we hold it. And it is a blessed blessedness that God gives us that we can come before him humbly and know that he will forgive us for our past transgressions. He gives us a way. He, he opens our hearts and our minds to his will. In the scriptures that help us to understand, or, you know, one is that he will never lie. He tells us his son is the rock that is unmovable. And it's amazing because as a boy growing up, I would have never thought that the situation that's going on today in this world would ever reach to this point, and yet it's just beginning. Because these are some amazing times we live in. Life as we knew it has changed before our eyes, and the world has their ideas as to why it's changing, global warming for one. And, they're, and they, what they don't know is their lives are only going to get harder and harder as time draws near. But we don't have to worry about it, do we? We have God's Spirit that helps us to understand and it gives us comfort every day of, that we take breath. The world does not know, but we know mankind was created for a purpose, to build a family. God gave us six days to get it right. And we are nearing the end of those six days. When that time comes, the world will experience a time like no other. But until that time comes, we have a path to follow. It's called the plan of salvation. And it happens every year like clockwork. It's dependable and it's reliable and it's true. The impact that it has had on the world over the years has changed many, many people all around the world. This plan helps us to distinguish those that follow God, those that are ignorant of the truth of God, and those who are against God. The truth has always made an impact on people, good or evil, believe or not believe. We all have to make a choice when we come of age. The Ten Commandments, the laws given by God to all mankind, laws to live by, laws to follow, laws that keep people safe, laws that when followed blesses the people in posterity and health. It's always had an impact on all of creation. They are alive. What God has set in motion, no man can change. And yet the world is trying to do that today, aren't they? Accept his way of living if that lifestyle goes against the laws of God. Man can't change anything that God has set in place. All we can do is follow the laws that God gives us. He gives us a spirit at baptism and it helps us to understand the rights and wrongs of the world and how we're supposed to live our, and conduct our lives, especially toward one another. We know that God sent his son into this world and he died for our sins. And that was 2,000 years ago or two days ago. Jesus gave his life for all mankind. Otherwise, we would have no hope, nothing to live for or to yearn for. Live and die, that's it. When we were drawn to learn the truth, it revealed something unexpected, that those that love God and his son would become heirs to the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ. The world thinks differently than what God's plan says. This carnal way of thinking hasn't changed in many centuries. Many generations have lived in darkness disregarding the light. Where would we be if our forefathers like Noah, Abraham, David, Joseph, Daniel, the prophets, John the Baptist, 
or the apostles. And of course, everyone else who believes. They all live to be a part of that light as we are trying to do today. Some did not have the promise and believed and died with much hope to a better way. Jesus, which we all know now, brought life to this world. That Lucifer, son of the morning, now known as Satan, was given charge over, charge over as the prince and power of the air. Since then, has destroyed and wrecked havoc on this world in every possible way. But the funny thing is, he can only go as far as God allows. He knows his time is running short and he knows that his fate is sealed. We have the promise. We have the armor of God. We have God's plan for salvation. By his spirit, it guides us down the path of righteousness, helping us to avoid Satan's pitfalls to salvation that frees us from our sins. We were all born with a choice, follow God and live or live by our own understanding, which leads to destruction. We chose life and the truth does set us free. Our burdens of sins, our burdens or sins that weighed us down are behind us because our Savior, Jesus Christ, died for us. And he opened up that path that we can be remorseful and he will forgive us. And they're forgotten by God. Our focus is on what lays ahead, a future that we yearn for and can only dream about. But we have to stand firm in the words of life. Because of our physical state, we see as all who know the truth. The world is building into a pressure cooker, and when it blows, nobody will be untouched, and that does include us. Our Savior suffered, and I can't believe that we wouldn't suffer also. It will affect us all. This, by the word of God, should not scare any of us, but give us joy that our salvation is at hand. Jesus said to Joshua, Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. And we read that in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Here today, one of, if not the last generation, living in a world that is upside down, wisdom and understanding does not show itself anywhere except in the body of Christ. And he is our rock guiding us just like those that came out of Egypt many years ago. There are many nations in, on this world, and I can't think of any of them that are dedicated in following the words of Jesus Christ. At one point, no nation could or dare to oppose the United States, which is Israel, and yet they don't know it. But now in these past generations, starting from World War II, those generations have turned away from God to the point of committing abominations in his sight, ignoring his laws that keep us safe. The nations see our failings, our sins, and our weaknesses, and they also know God is not with us anymore. All nations have turned their back on God, and Jesus told us a house divided will not stand. It's only a matter of time before we as a nation fall under Satan's control, and we see it fast approaching. We are small, but God works with people that are in less numbers, doesn't he? We know that God is with us. We have his promise. By reading and studying the inspired words of Christ, we learn by the examples of our forefathers that they too lived life troubled by the influences of Satan. Nothing new is under the sun. Good and evil has been a part of life on earth from the beginning. We are nearing the end of the sixth day. Don't we pray thy kingdom come? None of us should be surprised by the condition the world is in. We made a commitment by counting the cost of our actions to pass over our physical life to be a part of the spiritual body of Christ. Anyone who has gone under the waters of baptism knows how important baptism is. Without it, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Many around the world have attended services, eating unleavened bread and drinking the wine, which represents the body and blood of Christ. This is just a part of the salvation plan laid out by God's, for God, out for God's children. To all of us, it's of most important. 
Jesus said in John 6, verse 53, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. How important is it now when he plainly tells us, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. To know every year we can renew or start over, so to speak, because we do sin, Maybe not willfully, but unwillingly, and God knows. And he tells us with a repentant heart, he will forgive us. It's another way that God gives us to fight against our carnal nature. He tells us we're enmity against God. We're here because we want to be. We're here because we need him more than he needs us. God tells us that for seven days you will keep living out of our homes. Nobody has lived more than a day. So I would think that we must work at keeping sin, of our, sin out of our lives every day. We are able to take in a breath of air. The remnant around the world everywhere knows Joseph had seven years to prepare for the famine God warned Pharaoh about. We can see for ourselves over the past decade how this world has fallen from being obedient to God. How much longer before Jesus returns? Don't know. What really matters and, it, and what is really more important to all who believes is our obedience to our Creator who loves those who loves God. <laughs>